I'm not a dirty fighter. I've never done that in my life. So, uh, like I said, that was just an accident. That was Jean Pascal talking about how he's not a dirty fighter at a press conference at the end of a very controversial fight that happened in Montreal at the Bell Center. As we saw Jean Pascal face off against Roberto Belanti. I'm curious to find out your opinion. We want to hear from you on our social networks at facebook.com slash RBTL Sports, as well as on Twitter at RBTL Sports. We welcome back Michel Lacroix, voice Ooh. of the Montreal Canadiens, and also a, a boxing fan too. You had a chance of calling a, a, a big fight. Oh, we're, we're, we're going way back. <laughs> I was the ring announcer for the, uh, the, the first uh, about between uh, Hilton and Ouellette. Hilton and Ouellette. The, the one that ended with, what, was it eight seconds to go? In the, the uh, knockout of the, the, the 12th the, round? The final knockout, yep. I was there with a little bit of blood on my tuxedo shirt. Good, that, good. Was, that was neat. That <laughs> hopefully, was nice. hopefully we get your input as well. <laughs> to your right is Pierre Just You were a front line, uh, right there, front seat, with regards to uh, the event you were covering for RBTL Sports. Yep. Great to see you. I'm looking good forward to, to your here. insight. And to my left is uh, RBTL contributor and co-host David Hurley. All right. There's no denying that anybody in their right mind who knows boxing knows that Belanti put a little bit on there, yeah. all right? And that's to say the <laughs> least. <laughs> From what you see, we'll start with you, Michelle. Did he play his cards right? Did Belanti play his cards right by playing that up? Because technically, he didn't do anything wrong. Technically, you're right. But, uh, I mean, you do have to look at the... Uh, when you look the at the replay, rules. it doesn't make any sense. I mean, to, to, to see a guy... At, being hit that okay after the break, this I agree, but otherwise, I mean, it didn't make any sense. That the way it ended up, no way. Pierre? True <laughs> comedy. Uh, for my vantage point, this, it was the, the, weirdest of a, the weirdest of feelings. Uh, we literally had to back up and watch it on the big screen because we didn't know what happened. <laughs> I was, and I was literally watching from ringside mm -hmm. and I did not know what was going on because it didn't seem like it was that, it, it, wasn't, it didn't seem like a significant punch. And then to see the, the, the aftershock and the people yeah, looking in the I crowd, mean, I, wondering what's going on. I don't know how it came off on TV, but us being there, it, 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 felt, re it felt really Listen, eerie. I feel like that j a jab would have been more powerful than that punch. I mean, he it didn't was literally come in nothing. with any power pushed, at all. Yeah. Uh, really, to go down like that, you start to ask yourself questions. This guy's supposed to be on the main card fighting Butte. And then after that, he ends up taking the fight against... Uh, Jean Pascal, and yeah. then this happens in the second round, and you hear his manager say, "Stay down." I mean, hey, I'm not uh, a big right, person but they, about but they, but they can spin that, right? They can spin that if ever he's yeah. asked about, it. and that's going to come out over the next couple of days. Yeah. It's going to come out to say, "Why did you tell him to stay down?" He'll come back and say, "Look, I can't take any precautions. That's it. I have to protect my, my fighters for yeah. the safety of my fighters." The yeah. idea more is if Listen. you know, it was really interesting. I got to I got to watch the feed from a different uh, from a different country out of England, and we got to pick up a lot. You, the viewer got to listen to a lot of what was being said on the mics, and one of the things that one of his cornermen, I won't mention who it was, said this guy came here for a disqualification. This is what yeah. they do. Is what he was mentioning to a certain class of fighters. Yeah. Do you believe that that's that's what happened? He sees an opportunity. He saw an opening, <laughs> makes his money, and is on his way out. The check's already cashed at the bank. Why yeah. he? When he, first, when he felt the first body shot and then the second one, you can tell, you can tell in his face that he wanted out of the fight. Yeah, yeah. Now, do I think that he, he took a dive? In the history of boxing, it's happened before, but in that particular case, we don't know. We, we, don't, yeah. we, we literally don't know what happened. And for me being there, it, it was very weird. There's the unwritten rule we talk about. Would a Hilton or will that do that? Well, no, said, I don't think so. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not at of all. Of course not. But, they they but, would want to go 16 rounds if they could, yeah, But right? one must know that he was brought up here for a, a special purpose. I yeah. mean, you, you don't bring up a top boxer uh, to, to fight uh, Jean Pascal or, uh, yeah. or Boutet. Uh, and I, I think there's a, little, there's a little drama, of course, mm. but one must realize the role that this guy had uh, yeah. going in the ring. He was, he was the... the, the, the uh, the tune-up before the Kovalev fight, which, yeah. which, which is exactly. going to be now maybe in, in jeopardy, yeah. the, coming out with the out outcome of this, if it's a disqualification. Uh, I mean, it's still going to be reviewed by the boxing board. I no. still I don't like the fact that he went down. You'd think in the 21st century, player, boxers wouldn't take dives, yeah. uh, but this kind of looks like a dive. Anybody surprised that they called it a unintentional foul? How do you? I'm not how surprised. is it an unintentional yeah, foul? Because you hit clinch. the guy after you break from the clinch, and the guy yeah, says break. All the time. Well, from from the post game, from the post fight uh, press conference, Jean Pascal claimed that he didn't hear. He didn't hear mm -hmm. the break. Yeah. And from the noise that would, me being like us being there, there's a lot of noise. It could have easily drowned the referee. And Michael Griffin's a noted referee. You could tell by his reaction, he didn't know what was going on. Yeah, he, when he turned around, he looked, he looked a little lost. He didn't understand why he was on the ground. Yeah, he looked directly at the commission. The commission <laughs> looked directly right back at him, and they, they were looking at Belanta on the floor. That's it. And they, they didn't know what was going on. on. Yeah. You brought an important point, indeed. Griffin is one of the top in the business. Yeah, yeah. Russ so, Amber alluded to that at the, at the press so, conference. I mean, 
it clearly indicated, I think, that there was a break in the action. Yeah. And Pascal went at it, but was it that hard of a blow? No, it's like Roy, <laughs> yeah, Jones, it was, Roy Jones said, you can't punch them when they're down, you can't punch them when they're up. When can you punch yeah, them? Yeah, when you take a look at the trauma specialists, and very often in these types of events, I've seen them happen before, the trauma specialist's job is to overlook the paramedic and trainers, right? To make sure mm -hmm. that that's isolated and the trauma's been taken care of. If you take a look at the footage, you would see that the trauma specialists leave the ring. That never happens. And the only thing that it indicates to me is that either A, they made a gut shot with regards to what they were seeing visually mm -hmm. and were able to see enough visually to say, you know what, He's fine. This, this guy's fine, mm -hmm. right? And the only two guys that were left in that ring was a trainer and the paramedics. It's one of those things with boxing that you get to see very often, whether it's scoring, whether it's these black eyes. Do you believe that this is one of the reasons why boxing is not moving forward as, or as popular as it once was, and why MMA, for example, is taking the front seat with regards to combat sports? I think they should unify all these, the World Boxing Council, Union, they've got what, four, four organizations? Four organizations, but there's too much money in the way. That's it, but... There's too much money in just, the way. Just one, just one. So we can figure out exactly who's doing what, yeah. where, the how. I, ideally, that would be, the, mm -hmm. that would be the, the best thing to do, but there's so many promoters, the people that they, they don't want people to get in their pockets. And of it's, it's very unfortunate for Money boxing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. One thing's for sure is you have unified us right here. I'll read between the lines. We're so happy to have you on the show. Uh, for people who want to catch some of the action, of course, we know that you're at the Bell Center, but where else can they catch you? RDS, along with Kelly Blanchard. I've been doing golf for the PGA Tour for the last uh, let's say 25 <laughs> years or so. So we're getting ready for a brand new season, uh, upcoming season on the PGA Tour with uh, a new Canadian kid. Have a look, Nick Taylor. We'll hold that one for the next time we have. Right. I'm talking about a golf. I know you're passionate about it. Thanks for taking the time. Great to see you. Really nice. Thank, Thank you. you. And, and I'm getting confused. I'm getting confused about boxing because it's getting like American football. You can't hit a man when he's up. You can't hit a man when he's down. What the hell is going on? When are we going to be able to hit a man? Well, you should follow Canadian football. Everything goes. I guess so. <laughs> Stay with us after the break. My face-off is next. You don't want to miss it.